industries that a lot of uh, Americans aren't willing to take. Now, let's go ahead. Coming up in this next segment, I'm going to be speaking with Michael Cargill. He's the founder of Central Texas Gunworks. And I wanted to bring him in today to give him the last word on this very incredible mock mass shooting drill that took place here in Austin, Texas this weekend. What I have to say is I'm going to fart in your face. Yeah! I don't want to talk to you no more, you empty-headed animal food trough whopper. I fart in your gender direction. Your mother was a hamster and your father smelt of elderberries. Is there someone else up there we could talk to? She is armed with reason. Armed with reason. So if there was an attack, farting and dildos are going to save you guys. Is uh, this similar to like the Saul Alinsky fart in where they would hold these mass fart ins? When you come to my community, to the university that I love, and you threaten the lives of my friends, we fight in your general direction. 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 I fart in your general direction. We fight in your general direction. We fight in your general direction. We fight in your general direction. There were a few armed citizens that helped the off-duty sheriff take down the guy in the clock tower. So, I'm not answering any questions on that. that that's actually, the historical accuracy of that story. So, I will say, you know, I will say this, okay? It, you know, good job on that one, right? Great. This is not about the gun issue. This is about their protests, okay? I am a gun owner, okay? I shot my first pistol when I was three years old. Okay, I have been trained in tactical handgun usage, okay? I know a little bit about guns, okay? This is not about that. This is about their tasteless protest, okay? This is about ratcheting up the, the rhetoric of fear. This is about terrorizing our community, okay? That's what this is about. You like guns, you don't like guns. If you go to their page, most of the people attacking them are other gun rights advocates who are saying, you're making us look bad. Okay, so I think that it's time for somebody to stand up for a little bit of good taste, for a little bit of good humor, and to say, you know what, let's just ratchet down the fear, okay? This is an American president. Just add puppet, then vote and repeat every four years. Shane Steiner's involvement with InfoWarsLife.com truly happened in an organic way. I went to high school with Shane, his brother, knew his parents well, and he was visiting the office once, hadn't been to the office in years, and said, wow, I notice you're making and selling supplements. Do these really work? Because I've tried a lot of supplements as a uh, workout enthusiast, and I really think most of them are hype. And I said, here, take some home, try it. Well, a few weeks later, he came in blown away and said, I want to buy three boxes of this stuff to get my friends and family. It's simply amazing. He said, why does it work so well? And I said, listen, go to InfoWarsLife.com, watch the informational videos with Dr. Group and others. They understand how it all works. I know that it works for me. That's all I understand. The science, the facts, the research, people's testimonials, they're all on InfoWarsLife.com. You can check it out for yourself. I wanted to go to the gym. I wanted to push myself and work out harder. And that led to me being able to come out and do stuff like the barefooting and the surfing and stuff like that, which what I would have never done. I, I never would have done that uh, two years ago. Shane has said over and over again, more than just libido and energy, it made him want to get into the gym more. It made him want to get in better shape. And believe me, the Steiners have amazing genetics. Uh, his brother is a world champion steer wrestler. His dad, Bobby Steiner, is a famous world champion bull rider. They've got natural genetics. But when you added this to the mix, in Shane's own words, it took him to the next level. Shane noticed the mental clarity, 
Bobby was able to work out longer and gain muscle mass. He's already completely shredded. I gotta admit, for me, the biggest effect has been libido. Now, I've never claimed to have a body like some beach model, but back when I was 20, 22 years old and worked out every day, I looked great. But over the years, and being married, and having three kids, and working 18 hours a day, I gained basically 100 pounds. And it's been a long process of losing that weight in the last four years. But if you look at the photos and the videos of what I looked like four or five years ago versus today, the results are dramatic. I'd already cleaned up my diet, I was working out hard, but I'd only lost about 20 pounds. It was adding the other key ingredients from InfoWarsLife.com that helped me personally go to the next level and shed another 35 pounds. This has actually made me feel so good that uh, here late, about a year ago, I started training jujitsu, and that kind of led to doing some boxing and kickboxing. I mean, it's, it's amazing that two years ago, I was on the couch and couldn't even tie my shoes, and now I'm training with MMA fighters and uh, just doing stuff that I never thought that I'd, I would be doing ever again. So Super Male Vitality has allowed me to do some amazing things and if it has those kind of effects for me i know that it will do great things for you so just try super male vitality i promise you you'll love it and finally let's look at anthony gucciardi infowars.com reporter he also works with dr group and others helping develop the newest most cutting edge high quality supplements Let's take a look at what happened when he tried to barefoot ski for the first time with the Steiners. And remember, we're not making fun of him. He had the will to get in the arena, and he's lost more than 10 pounds in the last few years of fat and gained more than 10 pounds of muscle. And Anthony chalks it up to super male vitality as well. Bottom line, folks, you want to discover the power of super male vitality and super female vitality for yourself by visiting InfoWarsLife.com today or by calling toll-free 888-253-3139. Welcome back. Joining me now in studio is Michael Cargill. He's the founder of Central Texas Gunworks. And I wanted to get him in the studio because this weekend here in Austin, Texas, uh, we sort of had a very controversial mock mass shooting uh, that was said to take place on the University of Texas campus. Um, it was met with a very large counter protest. People weren't happy with the fact that they were going to be having this mock mass shooting on uh, UT campus during finals week. And basically just saying these people were fear mongering. Um, but I wanted to get you in here, Michael, because you and others have been working tirelessly for years to get campus carry enacted. Of course, that's going to set to take effect in January 2016. What did you think about this mock mass shooting event? Yeah, I've, I've actually been working, you know, with several groups on the University of Texas campus, also other groups around the state of Texas, uh, other universities, uh, the Texas A&M University, Texas Tech University. Uh, we've been working with uh, students for concealed carry on campus, you know, all around the state of Texas, trying to get campus carry passed. And we've been doing this since 2005. Uh, we've been in every single session. So we've been in session 2005, 2007, 2009, 13, and 15, trying to get campus carry passed. And, you know, what bothers me are, you know, groups like this who come along who did nothing to help us. You know, we needed people to go to the Capitol uh, to testify for some of these bills, these people were not present. We needed people to call our legislators, you know. Uh, we need people to hold up signs, you know, to get certain people elected into office in this state. None of these people were around, but now they come along, campus carry has already passed. The law is going into effect August the 1st, and now they're trying to give us a bad name by doing little silly and stupid stunts. Right, and so I know that when, if you saw the video that I posted over the weekend, I was never able to find this mock mass shooting. From what I understood with the police officers as well as other media that was there, uh, the group that was putting this on was being told to move to different areas because they kept, it kept being staged in places that were still on campus. UT said if they were on campus, they'd arrest them for trespassing. And so the media understood that they sort of got uh, pushed, you know, kept getting pushed to new areas. Then it turns out they actually staged the protest or the uh, the theatrical performance 30 minutes ahead of time. And so after the fact, the group says that they did this on purpose. They wanted to raise the point that 
uh, someone who's actually coming along to uh, do cause harm isn't going to tell you when and where they're going to do it. So, you know, yes, great, they made that point. But what ended up happening with all of the media that was there was that they're basically making fun of this group now, making a mockery of Campus Carry, <laughs> uh, turning this into a big joke and talking about how they were drowned out by farts uh, <laughs> by this other counter protesting group who, of course, was there with their, you know, very hilarious counter protest. So now, Michael, you have a very personal passion with why you were, wanted to get Campus Carry passed. Uh, so tell us a little bit about this and why, you know, this sort of turning it into a joke upset you. Well, you know, and, and let me be clear, you know, fart noises and things of this nature uh, using dildos, uh, that's not going to save anyone's life. Right. You know, so these, you know, counter protesters weren't doing anything that's going to save lives. So I'm not, you know, helping the counter protesters at all. Uh, what, these, what these guys did was they made a big mistake. First of all, you don't do a protest at the University of Texas campus on the last day of finals when you have your, um, your, the students are actually leaving to go home and they have plenty of time to mount a counter protest. They're happy, finals are over. So, oh, by the way, these guys are doing something on my campus I don't like, so let me go and yeah. counter protest. That was very dumb, you know, and then Col you know, General Colin Powell says something to me that was really important. Um, he said something about 10, 15 years ago. And he said that when he's, you know, doing a conflict, he uses the media to his advantage. And that is one thing that they failed to use the media right. to their advantage to get their point across. This was piss poor planning. You know, campus carry is something that's near and dear to my heart. My grandmother decided that at 70 years old, she was going to go to college to get her college degree. My grandmother only got a high school education. At 70, she decided she wanted to become a nurse, so she went to college. While my grandmother was traveling from a college library, sitting at a bus stop waiting for a bus to come, a guy came along, mugged her, and raped her. And I decided at that point, I would make sure that every female in my family had tools they needed to protect themselves. So this is not a joke. Mm -hmm. This is not a joke for me. This is something that I've been working for for over 10 years to get passed in the state. And I do not want clowns making a mockery of what we work so hard for to get passed. And we need a nice, smooth transition because there are other things that we want to get passed in this session down the road. Right, exactly. And that was one of the things that you uh, mentioned to me when I saw you Saturday. Um, was just that, you know, this campus carry isn't about some kid in a classroom taking down a mass shooter. That's not what this was about, because, A, th they're not going to have the training necessary to to take down a mass shooter, most likely. Uh, this is about self-defense. Yes, this is about my personal protection. This is about your personal protection. This is a license to carry a handgun. This is not about somebody being a one-armed security team trained to clear an entire building. This is not about that. This is about your individual personal protection and protection of your family and to protect yourself to stop someone from killing you. Uh, that is what this is all about, not to be made a mockery of uh, or anything else. And so I know we've seen uh, some of these pro open carry groups um, sort of staging these events where they will carry their um, AR-15s and things like that into Subway or whatever. Um, what, what, what should people expect with Campus Carry? Should, are they going to be seeing these long guns in schools? or? <laughs> and, and, and I also want to be clear on this point. I support you know, open carry. I support concealed carry. I support constitutional carry. I think it, our constitution, that is our right. That is our license. So we shouldn't have to pay the state any fee. So I want that to be nice and clear. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm all for the constitution. I think that piece of paper there, that is my right. I like Vermont. In the state of Vermont, I don't need a license to carry my handgun concealed openly. Uh, the Constitution is my license, and that is something that we need to move toward uh, here in the state of Texas. Mm -hmm. January the 1st, when open carry goes into effect for the, the state of Texas, we will become the 45th state to allow uh, open carry in this state. Uh, there are 44 states currently that have open carry. Starting January the 1st, Texas will become the 45th state. So starting January the 1st, you will be able to open carry your handgun with a license to carry a handgun. The state of Texas is changing the program from a concealed handgun license to a license to carry a handgun. Um, and with that, it will need to be in a holster. It needs to be in a holster that fits on your belt or a shoulder holster if you're going to open carry that handgun. Mm -hmm. And the way that's going to work is everywhere that you can conceal carry your handgun, you can open carry your handgun. So with the exception of a college campus, you will not be able to open carry that handgun on the college campus, not even on the streets, sidewalks, walkways, parking lots or garages. Right. And so I think a, a lot of people are really 
uh, concerned that they're going to have these guns in their face and that's going to make students very uncomfortable. The fact 